Hi guys, welcome to this tutorial. It's going to be a short one. We're just focusing on how to build a, uh, how to use a screen capture actor to create a really, really basic camera. I'll give you a quick demonstration. So what we're doing is we're going to have a basic camera that sets up inside the scene. It's, uh, the camera is actually over here, but it's invisible. And as the player moves around, the camera kind of follows in. What up? Looking good. Add a little bit of effect. The other thing that we'll be doing is we'll be building it in so that I give you a quick crash course in how to use some of the stuff that we've made so that you can do things, for instance, having the camera brought in as a particle system so that when I play, we can see that obviously it can be worked around there. While I wouldn't use it ex in exactly this function, it's meant to open up some doors for you. So to begin with, I'd like everyone to start with the very basics. Uh, we want a scene that we can actually capture though this time. So can I get everyone to open up examples slash example map? Now, if you load up example map, we have this basic area. Nothing amazing, but can I, to begin with, we're going to be getting a very simple static mesh to just encase this thing in. Uh, I think it's under the word frame, all assets, static mesh. This is Lumber After, Wind Frame 2. So I'm going to drop this in here. And because I'm slack, I'm going to say negative 1 on the z axis, which flips them upside down. Now, the next thing that we're going to require is called a text prop, which is just a basic plane here, text prop plane. And this is what we'll actually be loading our screen onto. Now, if this was an actual game, I would be using a proper mesh for all of this stuff, but given it's a tutorial, we can definitely get away with just this for the time being. If I straighten it up right. So, I'm just going to align this into here, pop it back. We can clearly see that I've made a couple of little errors there. Um, scale wise, I imagine the value would be 0 0.7. Oh, like a glove. Cool. So, this thing here is going to end up being our camera screen. Okay, now to begin with, what I want people to do is I'm going to get a file, I'm going to save this, and I'm going to give it a name that works. So I'm going to call it camera map, camera example map. Now, I want you to open up your content browser, go to actor classes, and have a quick look for one called scene capture actor. Now the one that we're after here is scene capture 2D actor. Okay. Now if you right click and you add scene capture actor here, you'll notice that we get a nice little camera just chilling out. Now this is a really 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 simple um, procedure that we're about to go through but it's extremely uh, it's very simple in, in its concept but it can be extremely powerful when used correctly. So I've got my camera in the game. Now in a, when we normally make a material, for instance this surface on the wall or this concrete down here, anything like that, we're sampling textures. But in the event that we want to create a camera screen, what we're actually doing is we're generating a texture on the fly. And what this actually means is that if I open up here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a new, new texture render target 2D. Okay, I click it. And I'm going to put this in PG underscore camera tutorial uh, assets is going to be my package. And under here it'll be objects. And I'm going to call this T underscore scene capture actor 2D. Oh, yeah. Underscore camera main. Whatever you want to call it. In that case, this is what I felt like would be appropriate. And we hit OK. Yeah. So we now have this green texture. Now what this green texture actually is, is if I click on this camera, I hit F4, and load up the properties, you'll see that I have this little variable here that's called target, uh, texture target. All I have to do is click on texture render target 2D within the content browser and click on this green arrow. And now if you look here, you see that my texture is now equal to the image that would be coming out of this. So to move on, all we have to do from here is uh, some very simple stuff. I'm just going to right click and hit new material. This is going to be called, uh, the group is going to be called feeds, because camera feeds. We're going to call it m underscore camera feed underscore zero one. So we've got this. 
what we have to do from here to move on is I'm going to drag my texture render target into here. Now if I wanted to, I could theoretically finish this off really quickly. I could just grab this, plug it into the emissive, and bada bing, we have ourselves a texture that comes out again. And if you look here, as I move my camera around, we start to get a different effect. But we can do a little bit more than that. So what I want you to do is to go down here and set the blend mode to translucent. And we're going to set the lighting model to be unlit. We've now got this going on. The next part that I'm going to be doing here is under material function, I want you to do a quick search for generated band. Now if I was to plug generated band in just to the emissive, this is typically what it does. Uh, what we actually want it to do is just create like a, uh, a band that's going like this on the screen. So I've connected a time node to the offset, which gives us this type of scrolling effect. Now if you wanted to slow it down, you could do so by adding a divide node by holding D and clicking and then dividing it by like, I don't know, four, four sounds good. Now we've got this slow moving thing. Now this is gonna be used to control some of the opacity. So I'm gonna get this data and I'm gonna add, if I was to plug this into the opacity, I'll show you, I'm getting ahead of myself. If I was to plug in my scene to here and this into my opacity, you can now see that wherever that black band is, we end up with that effect, right? What I actually want to do is I want to always have the rest of the screen at least slightly visible. So in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the result here and I'm going to add, hold down 1 to click to add a constant and I think I'm going to add 0 0.8, sounds good, run into the opacity and now I can see that it's slightly, it's just got that little bit of a band there. Um, now if you were being pedantic you could also add a constant clamp to make sure that your opacity never entered into a value above 1. Constant clamp grabs any numbers below 0 and makes them 0. Any numbers above 1 now just become 1. Just clamps them off. So we've got that going. I'm going to hit tick, close. Now all I have to do is add this material to here and we can see that we have a nice little working camera. I'm going to put this here. Now there are a few problems with this camera that we can see straight off the bat. I loaded the game we can clearly see that you know it's working and I've, I've got my guy there, but you'll notice that that area in the background is black. Now the reason for that is if I go open the camera, there are a couple of settings here that are useful for changing. The first is the far plane. Now this camera is only actually going to capture things that are up to 500 units away. Look at this screen over here as I punch this number up to say 2048. Now I'm capturing the door and everything else. On the other hand, if I drop it down to something as low as like 100, you can clearly see that we can't get anywhere. So in this instance, I'm going to say 1024 is a good value. Now this obviously depends on the type of scene that you've got. I mean, if this is something that is going to require um, like a, a long open area, it's going to be pretty intensive. You're also going to want to have a, a longer far plane to count for it. Now from here, I'm also going to tell it to be lit instead of lit shadows. Uh, sorry, lit no shadows. This just means that you get that slightly darker thing. This computer can take it. So I'm not too concerned. And the final thing we're going to do is we're going to say use main scene post-processing settings. Uh, it's not much, but it can add that little bit of an extra touch that makes it feel like it belongs in the world a little bit more. You could potentially make up for this with the actual material by darkening it off in your own little way. So now we've got that going. I'm going to work into the final part. Now the final part here is very simple. Uh, I want this camera to actually follow the player around. Now there are a few ways you could do this. Um, I'm going to assume that the camera is potentially on some sort of trail, like that it's moving back and forth as it follows players. Again, you can see my clipping plane is becoming painful there. I'm going to crank it up. Now I've got the whole room. Now I'm going to assume that this camera is actually going to be on a rail of some sort, moving around. And because I'm making that assumption, I'm going to go to Kismet. And with the camera selected, I'm going to right click and hit New Matinee. And under Matinee, I'm not going to bother with the actual main movement itself. I'm going to add new uh, camera group. I'm going to call this uh, security camera. So we've got this in there. And then under movement, see it says look at group name. We want to look at a group called player. So make more sense in just a second. And then under rotation mode, I want to tell it to use the look at group to always look at. Okay. The next thing that we have to do, this is the simple part, is to go new, empty group, and we can call this one player. And under this variable called player, I'm going to go new variable 
player, and we'll click player. I'm going to connect this in, and instead of having all players, I'm just going to have it player index 0, which should be the player. I'm going to go new event, and on level loaded, invisible, I'm going to say play. Whenever this completes, at the moment, I'm just going to get it to keep playing itself over and over and over again. Now, theoretically, we could add movement to that track as well, but if you look at what happens now, Oops, what's going on there? There we go. Oh, of course, simple mistake. Now, if you were following along with this, there's a really thing, uh, simple thing you can do wrong there, and that is that under camera, I need to set the physics to be interpolating. And now when I move around, you can see that my camera keeps track of me. And if we wanted to, we could even mount that inside of some mesh that's actually moving around the wall, moving throughout the world, whatever we choose. You can also set it up to stop at you know, the appropriate time, etc, etc. It's pretty simple stuff, but it can be really powerful. Now the final thing I want to really just stress is that because what we're essentially doing here is we've got this texture render target 2D. This is just making a texture in the game. There are some settings under here that we can change as well. So if I want, I can bump up the res, whoa, not that high, to like for a 5, since a 512 by 512 image. Uh, you can set up all sorts of other things as well to make it a little bit more useful. Um, but the one thing, I'll, as I said, I want to stress is that if I go to here, I can right click. Uh, I'm going to make a particle system, just as an example. And I'm going to call this feeds, just like before. And this time I'm going to call it p underscore camera feed zero one. Okay. And if I want, I can actually go ahead and get the material that we've created under require. Just tick it in, and you'll see, I'm going to get rid of the velocity node, we're actually able to make particles that are actually using these cameras. Now, while that does sound like it wouldn't be something that we'd actually want to do, the advantage of being able to use particles is that we can mess around with them a little bit. So if I get rid of the rate and go to burst, I can go burst list and just add a single one. I can then also go required, just get rid of the middle loop, set it to maybe one. The reason I've done this is I get rid of the lifetime module as well. The reason I've done this is that if I right click, for instance, I could do size, size scale by time, and we could actually create like a like a holographic projection of the scene, for instance. So I could say at zero seconds, it shouldn't be zero on the x-axis. We can have the thing pop up. I could add extra effects, but to be honest, I don't think it's worthwhile me really knocking it together. But to demonstrate, I think it's quite important. Let me set this to rectangle. There we go. So if we wanted to, I could actually have this thing kind of shooting in from various ways to kind of get the full effects. You know, um, come down here, maybe set that to like 0.2 so you get that real quick snap. You know, and if you complete this with the material effect and maybe some vector parameters, we can get a really, really simple thing going. But I think at the end of the day, it can be really powerful. It can make your world feel a whole lot more interactive and can really add a lot to what you're making. So uh, I hope this was useful. If uh, you're interested, we have plenty of other tutorials that have already been done and plenty more coming, so feel free to subscribe. Thanks guys.